Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. And today we are going to be talking about the brand new Guillermo del Toro movie Nightmare Alley based on the novel by William Lindsay Gresham and this movie stars a brilliant cast of a bunch of people mainly Bradley Cooper and a bunch of just other supporting characters in this film and this is definitely a movie about Bradley Cooper's character his entire arc everybody else is definitely a supporting cast member for his arc in this story. And if you guys don't know what this movie is about, it's essentially about Bradley Cooper's character who is, you know, trying to learn how to be a mentalist in a carnival back in 1941. And so he's kind of learning these different things, these different tactics, these different ways to read people and becoming a mentalist and becoming this act in this circus and eventually letting that get to his head. And it goes into such crazy directions because of course it's Guillermo del Toro. And this was a story. Yes, it's not something that was original that he wrote, but it is a story that warrants the direction from somebody like Guillermo del Toro. If you know his films, you know that they are all uniquely his movies. They are definitely movies that cannot be made by anybody else besides him. Like for example, Pan's Labyrinth and The Shape of Water, two of my favorite movies from him that are brilliant, that were both, you know, very much praised for like Oscar-worthy performances and Oscar-worthy direction, especially from Del Toro and especially his win for Best Picture with The Shape of Water. This movie is just definitely yet another smash hit from him. And I don't think it's as good as those past two that I just mentioned, but it is definitely a really really well directed movie that is beautifully shot. I cannot praise the cinematography and the performances enough in this movie. And that's all thanks to Guillermo del Toro because he is a master filmmaker. Now every time that he has a movie come out in theaters, I'm always going to want to rush out to watch it. And in terms of the story, I honestly really did not know much about this story. Even from watching the trailers, I didn't really quite know what this movie was about or what directions it was going to go. And so the movie kept on continually surprising me up until a certain point. And I think there are some aspects of this movie that are a little bit predictable with certain characters' motivations and certain things that happen, especially towards the end. But it's one of those stories where I really don't care the fact that I predicted the ending because it's so poetic and it's so just well done. And I just saw where the character was going and I was dreading where that was possibly going to be and when it happens I was just so enraptured into the story and into the performances especially from Bradley Cooper who is phenomenal in this movie he is just incredible in this role and I just was so invested in his character and both you know his successes and his downfalls and all the ups and downs within this movie and especially like I said with that ending that really did blow me away this was just really a performance that just stood out to me. In terms of all the performances this year, he really does stand out. And when it comes to the supporting cast, like I mentioned earlier in the video, that they are definitely a supporting cast. And I think that's where some of my negatives lie in this movie because a lot of the supporting cast is definitely only a supporting character in this movie that doesn't have a full realized arc in this movie and they're only there to kind of push Bradley Cooper's character forward in his arc and so in that way they're used brilliantly because they do exactly what they need to do but they don't do anything more and so in terms of characters like Willem Dafoe and Rooney Mara's character and especially Tony Collette and a few others in this movie some of them are just there to support Bradley Cooper's character and that's all fine because all their performances in terms of what they're meant to do in terms of the story of this movie and how they're pushing that character arc they do it perfectly I just couldn't help but want more stuff especially from Tony Collette and Willem Dafoe some of those characters just you know they appear in the first act and they never show back up towards the end of the movie and even though their ideas and their themes and certain things that they say do come back towards the end it's just their presence is sorely missed because the first act of this movie and the first half really in terms of where it takes place and different storylines in it I found a little more I guess visually interesting because of the setting and once that setting changes it's a little bit less you know colorful and you know exotic and really crazy because they're kind of outside of the carnival but it's still dealing with that idea of mentalism and those ideas and those scenes especially with Kate Blanchett are really really well written. This movie is filled with scenes where you see these characters really trying to dive deep into what each other's body language are and trying to pick each other's character apart and there's so much subtext within what they're saying because what they're saying is not really what they mean and it's filled with stuff like that. There's so many things that you can read between the lines with and see what each character's motivations are and if you're looking close enough you can figure out what characters are actually trying to get out of each other and it's really really fascinating and you'll bounce between really great written scenes like that and the great character beats with these supporting casts and a brilliant you know overall performance from Bradley Cooper and it just kind of is a disappointment that some of these characters don't go through as grand of arcs as Bradley Cooper does. I did absolutely love Rooney Mara and Kate Blanchett though. In terms of the supporting cast, those two were definitely my favorites. And I will say occasionally that there are times where this movie feels a little bit disjointed 
it. And that's, you know, this is a long movie. It's two and a half hours long. It doesn't really, you know, it does feel its length, but doesn't feel like it's overly long. It feels like it has, you know, a decent pace towards it where you're always invested in these characters and in this story and trying to unravel, you know, what the characters' motivations are throughout the entire thing and trying to figure out where this movie's going to go. So you're always invested and you're always interested in the story of this movie. But at times, you know, when you're cutting between different scenes, a lot of transitions between these moments feel a little disjointed. Like one scene in particular towards the beginning of the movie is where Bradley Cooper is showing this drawing, this new idea of this act that they can do at the carnival to Rooney Mara's character. And he has this sketch of this electric chair. And then it kind of does like a little Star Wars, you know, wipe. Very old school of filmmaking that I love Guillermo del Toro does throughout this movie. But, you know, the screen kind of wipes to black. And then it kind of fades back in and all of a sudden you see Bradley Cooper sharing, you know, this electric chair with Rooney Mara's character, like the very next scene and their romance is like already starting. And so it just feels like we missed a little bit of information in between those two cuts. And it feels like we set up an idea, some possible thing that could cause some conflict within the story. And you kind of pass through and there's no conflict and it's just, you know, it's already there. It feels like they possibly could have had another step in there that could have made the character's journey a little more difficult. And that happens a few times. Like that example is probably not the greatest example, but it gets the point across without me spoiling certain things towards the end of this movie. But at times it feels like I'm missing little bits and pieces that I think could improve the story even more. Even though it's already at a really, you know, lengthy length, I feel like I still was missing little bits and pieces that I wanted to have to have a full complete story. And I think that also does lie within the the you know missing arcs from some of the supporting cast members that you never see again like little bits and pieces like that I feel like I wanted a little more closure with certain things but like I said the ending with Bradley Cooper's character is so perfect that I can forgive the movie for certain things like that because the supporting cast as much as I wish they showed up again you know later on in the movie I'm still glad that what they did with the character was still important and still impactful by the time you came to the end of the movie, even though you didn't see them again. But overall, I really, really did enjoy Nightmare Alley. Of course, Guillermo del Toro is a great director, and of course, he's going to do this source material justice. I really am interested in seeing the original movie that was made in, I think, the 1950s or 60s. I'll probably go back and watch that one, and it's just a really fascinating story to me. So thanks, guys, for watching this video. What are you guys' thoughts on Nightmare Alley? Definitely comment that down below. I'm curious to see what all you guys think, and definitely subscribe to the channel and check out other videos that I've been doing. I just had, you know, a series of reviews for a bunch of Spider-Man movies. I just did, you know, the Sam Raimi trilogy and the Mark Webb duology with Andrew Garfield. And so those reviews are wrapped up in anticipation for Spider-Man No Way Home, which I probably maybe already have up my Spider-Man No Way Home review. So definitely go check that out. And of course, this one and a bunch of other reviews for the rest of the year and counting down to 2022 already. So thanks guys for watching this video. I hope to see you all in my next one. Mm -hmm.